The Great Crusade, produced by the radio and television apostolate in cooperation with the St. Louis Review, now presents Quiz a Catholic, a religious quiz program designed to lead men closer to God to a better understanding of things Catholic. Hello, friends. This is Lee Cavanaugh welcoming you once again to Quiz a Catholic. We're mighty happy to have you with us today. And a very special word of welcome to all you folks in the Little Rock, Arkansas area who are seeing Quiz a Catholic for the very first time today. A brief word of explanation about how we play our game. Let's take a look over here. We have five categories of subjects for use on the program. They are objects, practices, events, personalities, and teachings. The object might be something like a crucifix. Uh, we might have then a practice, for example, something like the practice of many Catholics tipping their hat when they pass a church. A teaching might be something like the sacrament of baptism or a personality. The fifth category might be someone like St. Peter. We'll see a little bit more about how we play our game as we go along here, but basically we invite you folks at home to send us subjects in one of those five categories. And we have a panel on Quiz a Catholic and they have three minutes during which they can ask questions capable of a yes or no answer in an attempt to identify the subject you sent in. If they don't do it in three minutes, you receive the statue of Our Lady of Television. More about that later on. Right now, let's meet the members of our panel here on Quiz and Catholic for today. First of all, we have Mr. Tom O'Toole. Now, Tom's in the uh, real estate business in St. Louis. He majored in, uh, I believe, medieval history at St. Louis University. And he has thousands of O'Toole <laughs> relatives who watch every program and send in cards saying, Tom was great today, and it's invariably true. Hi, Tom. How are you? Very good, Lee. How are you? How about the thousands of relatives? Eh? There's a lot of O'Tooles around. They're all watching. Well, we got our share, anyway. <laughs> okay, fine, Tom. We're happy to see you here on the program once again today. And we're happy to welcome, for the very first time, the Quizzic Catholic, Mr. Robert T. Hellrung, president of the St. Louis Medical Credit Bureau. Hi, Bob. How are you? Hi, Lee. Uh, let's see, you're a Notre Dame alumnus, right? That's right. Well, I hope you do the alma mater proud on Quiz a Catholic today. We're real happy to have you. Hope you have some fun here in the next 30 minutes, okay? Thank you. And right next to Bob Hellrung, we have uh, Miss Nellene Zeiss. She's a research manager with the St. Louis Advertising Agency, deals in facts and figures and statistics. Is that right now? Just about, please. Tell me, is it true what I heard somebody say the other day about statisticians? If all the statisticians in the United States were laid end to end, they wouldn't reach a conclusion? <laughs> <laughs> That's not true, is it? I'll, I'll investigate that. All right, fine. We're happy to see you on the program once again. And we want to say the very same for the fourth member of our Quiz of Catholic panel for today. He's a St. Louis lawyer, Mr. Dick Meehan. Hi, Dick. Hi, Lee. How are you? Fine. And he carries his legal uh, training into practice on the program every uh, time it's on. Every time a viewer wins one of the statues, he jumps to his feet and says, I object. Good, good. <laughs> okay, there we have our, our four <coughs> members of the Quiz Catholic panel for today. And uh, as I said, we're real happy to have them. Now, at the beginning of the program, we mentioned we wanted to welcome for the very first time to Quiz Catholic all you viewers in the area of Little Rock, Arkansas. And we want to extend a most sincere welcome to you. Hope you enjoy Quiz Catholic in the weeks ahead. And in connection with that premiere in Little Rock, we're most honored and happy to have with us as our special guest on Quiz a Catholic today, the Most Reverend Albert L. Fletcher, the Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Little Rock, Arkansas. Bishop Fletcher, welcome to Quiz a Catholic. Well, I'm very, very happy to be here. This is quite an experience for me. I know of Quiz a Catholic from, from others, but I have never participated in it myself, and I'm happy to be here. Well, we're most happy to have you, and I'm sure many of your friends in Little Rock are happy to see you today, Bishop Fletcher. Let's go right to work on our panel now, shall we? Yeah, I'll be fine. The first subject was sent to us today by Oscar R. Anderson of 5537 Adelaide Avenue in East St. Louis, Illinois. It's a practice. The new law of charity given to us by Christ requires that we help our neighbor when he is in need. One of the greatest charitable acts we can perform is to visit the sick. This practice is the corporal work of mercy, visiting the sick. Well, it's ladies first today on uh, Quiz the Catholic, Nellie and Zeiss, for this practice. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you. I mean, um, you're welcome. Is this uh, something <clears throat> I might have practiced in the last year, Lee? Very possible, yes. Is it, is, would all, all Catholics practice this at some time or other? Yes, I think that's quite likely. Do we connect it with any particular time of the year? No, couldn't tie it down that way. Dick? Uh, could it be practiced any day of the year then, Lee? Yes. Uh, practiced several times a year by a Catholic? Could be. Uh, any particular time of the day? No. Tom O'Toole? Uh, is this practice uh, performed in uh, any particular place? One specific place? Is that what you meant, Tom? 
Well, particular types of places. Yeah. Yes, I think we have to give you. I was trying to sneak out of that, <laughs> but uh, we well, give that's, you yes. That's standard procedure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I'd practice this also. You okay. might very well do so. Sure, uh, you have. This is tough. This is a rough one. Uh, would it would it be practiced in the home? Yes. It, it, well, whose home? Well, I can't ask you that, but I mean, <laughs> it could it could happen in a it home. Might be yes. practiced in others' homes. Yes. Besides my own. Yes. What do you mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, Two minutes to go. Is this practice uh, uh, charitable? Shall yes, we say? it is. Uh, is it uh, practice of uh, uh, fulfilling one's duty, maybe to his fellow man, some way? It would constitute that, wouldn't you say, Bishop yes, Fletcher? I would yes. Say so. Very definitely. Uh, is it a charitable work? Yes, it is. Does it have anything to do with visiting? Uh, People that are ill in hospitals, or uh, hey, you are so right, you hit it right on the head because our <laughs> practice is visiting the sick, right, Bishop Fletcher? Yes, indeed, and it isn't exactly a surprise that the panel would get this with such ease in a way. It's such an important one in the church. I can't help but thinking when we when they mentioned that of what an important place it took uh, in the way our Lord seemed to feel about it. He made that thing of visiting the sick. The uh, example for showing what he meant by loving our neighbor. You remember the example of the uh, uh, the Good Samaritan. How he, um, uh, the young man asked him, who is my neighbor? And he uh, didn't tell him in abstract words. He told him by an example of the Good Shepherd, of the Good Samaritan. Now, uh, how they passed by, certain ones passed by, finally the Good Samaritan came and uh, um, ministered to him and took care of him. And then our Lord asked the young man, who was neighbor to him who fell among robbers? And of course he said, he who showed him mercy. And our Lord said, go and do in like manner. Well, that uh, sort of applies to us too in a special way. Go and do in like manner. Uh, there's such a thing as doing too much visiting and there's such a thing as visiting too little. The thing that I think that enables us to do just the right amount and to do it in exactly the right way is to remember that uh, what our Lord said, that whatever we do to the least of his brethren, we do to him also. And if we do it that way, well, we will be a real help to the sick person and we'll bring wonderful blessings and help to ourselves. Fine, Bishop Butcher. Thank you very much. Let's move along now with subject number two on Quiz of Catholic today. Sent to us by Mrs. Earl Stanky of 3210 Portis Avenue in St. Louis, and this is a personality. The wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed by God. Lot, who was a righteous man, was told to gather his family and leave the city, but not to look back on the destruction. His wife did not obey, and as she looked behind, was turned into a statue of salt. This personality is Lot's wife. Uh, right for this personality, Tom O'Toole, may we start with you. Okay, uh, Lee, uh, is this a man? No. Bob? Is this person living today? No. Nellie? <coughs> is this uh, a woman? Yes. A, a particular woman? Yes. Um, would we find her mentioned in the Bible? Yes. In the New Testament? No. Dick Meehan? This is an Old Testament uh, personality. Yes. Uh, was she uh, a member <laughs> of the Jewish uh, nation? Yes. Uh, was she uh, either a, a ruler or uh, related to a ruler? Uh, no, not related to a ruler, no. Not mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -mm. Oh, so we have four no's and we're open for general questioning. Is so she important in Jewish history? Yes, I think so. Is there a particular event connected with her? Yes. 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 Would this be Judith? Judith, no. Would we connect this with Moses, the time of Moses in any way? No. Would it be after the time of Moses? No. Would this be a miraculous event? Uh, yes, it wouldn't. Yes, it would be. Would the uh, event, uh, the miraculous part of it, would be it be uh, uh, good or bad, uh, or would it be either one of those? Yes, it would be either good or bad. <laughs> we narrowed that one down. <laughs> was she famous as a mother? Uh, as a mother would not be her chief claim to fame. Uh, was it a, a, an unfortunate event, Leo? Yes. A tragedy. Was this Lot's wife? Yes, it was. By golly, Mrs. Stanky, subject Lot's wife. Right, Bishop? That is really wonderful. I don't see how they get them, uh, Lee. 
But uh, Lot's wife, I think most everybody will remember that unusual story of how uh, uh, Almighty God sent his angels to tell Lot and his wife and their family, two daughters, that he was going to destroy Sodom where they lived. They were good people, and the angels led them out of the city, but in going out of the city, why, he told them that they should not look back, you remember, and Lot's wife did, and she turned to a pillar of salt. Well, sometimes people say, well, ladies are too curious. <laughs> but after all, I think many times men folks are just about as curious as they are. Curiosity is a fault. It's not a sin, exactly. The thing that was wrong about what Lot's wife did was she disobeyed God's command. That's the way everything that we do. Anything that's wrong is an act of disobedience to God's command or a, uh, an omission of something he commanded us to do. Uh, disobedience is a hard thing, actually. It goes against our proud nature. But it is the most necessary and reasonable thing for us to do. Let's try to remember, I think it's a very good time for us to remember, that all lawful authority is from God, whether it's ecclesiastical or whether it's civil. Let's try to remember that, and it will make our obedience to the law easier. Well, thanks, Mr. Fletcher. Uh, this is the uh, subject that we invite you folks at home to kind of outguess the panel on. Here's what I mean. The panel, all they ever know is the category. They don't know anything else about the subject. It's their job to find it. Well, this time, we're just going to tell you folks at home the category <coughs> and not show it the subject on your screen, so you'll have a chance to see if you can outwit them. Anyway, this is a subject sent in by Mrs. Daniel Callahan of 1372 Granville in St. Louis. It's an event, and uh, let's see. May we start with Dick Meehan? Is this a specific event, Lee? Yes. Uh, is it biblical? Uh, no. Uh, has this event taken place? Yes. Uh, did it take place uh, after the year 1000 A.D.? No. Did it take place prior to 1000 A.D.? Yes. Let me interrupt for a moment and just ask Bishop Fletcher, when I said there was no biblical character th to this at all, that was, was that a correct answer, Bishop? Well, uh, not exactly at this description or something about it is contained in the Holy Scripture. Well, fine, then. I just wanted to backtrack on that because I wasn't sure. So it answered to somebody's question, was it biblical? We'll say yes, partially. So who are we talking to now? <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> uh, okay, Bob, you want to keep going? Is, uh, is it biblical? Yes, partially. During the life of Christ? No. Nellie? <clears throat> but it also has some reference to time... Uh, after Bible days, after biblical days, is uh, that right? Yes. Um, is this old te uh, the biblical part of it Old Testament? No, it is not. Lee, is there a specific person associated with this event? Uh, well, yes. Is that, would that person live at any time during the period of time that Christ was on earth? Yes. Uh, Two minutes ago. Was that person a, a Catholic? Yes. Was he a member of the hierarchy? Yes. Uh, was he one of the uh, the first bishops then? Yes. Uh, was he St. Peter? Yes. Uh, is this an event that occurred in Rome, or in, in Rome or Italy? No. No. We're open for general questions. <coughs> this is an event in St. Peter's life? Well, it's an event in which he was involved, yes, and during his life. Well, was he directly physically <coughs> involved in this event, Lee? Yes. Was it uh, something in regard to his uh, a persecution of St. Peter? No. Did it also involve our Lord? No. Did it have anything to do with the, the uh, setting up the uh, founding of the church? In that no. Respect? Well, no. Did it involve any of his, of his travels? Well, uh, no, not directly. I mean, he traveled perhaps to... His uh, writings? No. Was there some other uh, no, Catholic no. associated with St. Peter in this event? Yes. Uh, Is it a, another saint? Well, there undoubtedly were, yes. No, was this other person a saint, I think? Nellie? Well, uh, the, it could have been that there were, uh, there was a saint or other saints involved. Is this a, any, involve any of the miracles of St. Peter? It's having to do with Antioch, where he uh, no. saw his first seat. Nope. How's our time? Half a minute Does it ago. involve St. Paul also? Uh, Bishop yes. Fletcher? Yeah, yeah. Does people. it uh, involve all of the apostles? Uh, not all of them, I don't Not all of them. No. Is it uh, perhaps right after Pentecost? A lot of conversions were made? No. Was it the concession of authority to uh, St. Peter by the apostles in the... Uh, no, that's not what we're looking for. But was it his uh, travels? Second. Did it pl take place um, in the room just before they went out to teach the gospel? No. Did it take place within a, a year of that period of time, Lee? No, I'm afraid... Was Peter time. teaching? 
Now our time is up, and uh, that means that Mrs. Daniel Callahan, of 1372 Granville in St. Louis, uh, receives a statue of Our Lady of Television for beating the panel with the subject, the Council of Jerusalem. Oh, that's a rough one. Well, uh, <laughs> Lee, I'm not surprised. Now, the Council of Jerusalem took place around 50 or 51 A.D., only about 15 years after our Lord left this world. Um, it, it was where the apostles got together. St. Paul and Titus came down from uh, Antioch to St. Peter. And there were a couple of other apostles, St. James and John, who were still in Jerusalem. And they came down to discuss some important questions. And they came down to see St. Peter, to decide them for him. And the question, of course, at that time was whether the Jews who had embraced the Christian religion were still obliged by the old Mosaic laws, and whether also those who became Catholics were obliged by the old Mosaic laws. Well, it's important because uh, the apostles, who were the first bishops, and who were scattered around in fulfilling what our Lord told them to do. They came together, only those few who could get there, and uh, it was a very, some very important things were decided. But one of the things that seems so important to us is the fact that they came there to see St. Peter primarily. He was the one who, after the meeting, pronounced what his decision was and what became the law of the church. So uh, the Council of Jerusalem, although it was way back there, it is a very important council. It is one of the sort of uh, impressions through history which shows how our Lord led his church from the very beginning. All right, Bishop Fletcher, thank you very much. I'd like to take a moment out now to extend once again to you folks uh, an invitation to take part in Quiz Catholic. Remember, uh, send us a subject in one of those five categories, objects, <coughs> events, personalities, teachings, or what I leave out, practices, huh? and uh, send them to Quiz a Catholic in care of the station you're watching right now. And if your subject is used on the program and the panel does not identify it, then you receive one of these beautiful statues of Our Lady of Television, the patroness of the Catholic radio and television apostolate. So remember that. Send your subject to Quiz a Catholic in care of the station you're watching right now. And we want to extend a very special invitation uh, here on this first program in the Little Rock, Arkansas area for you folks in Little Rock to send us a line. Will you quiz a Catholic in care of this station? Okay, let's go to work with them. Oh, Bishop Fletcher, this is a rough one. We'll give him trouble on this one. This was sent in by Ida B. Ryan of 855 Westgate in University City, Missouri. It's an object. The laws of the church are always designed to help man gain eternal salvation. One such law requires that Catholics abstain from meat on Friday because the church realizes that self-denial is one of the means by which man can increase in spiritual perfection and show God that he is sorry for having offended him. This object, then, is the fish eaten by Catholics on Friday. All uh, right, for this object, Bob Hellrung, may we start off with you, sir? All right, Lee, is this a specific object? Not specific, no. Nellene? Would this be a class of objects, Yes. Lee? <coughs> would some of them be ex in existence today? Yes. And would they be found <coughs> in the United States? Uh, would they what? Now? Be found in the United States? As partially, yes. Um, would they be likely to be found in a church? No, not, no. No, I'll give you an all out no on that and move to Dick Meehan. Are they found throughout the universal church, Lee? Mm, pretty universal, yes. Are they manufactured objects? No. Tom O'Toole? Are these objects blessed? No. Let's see, we're open for general questions. Are now. they portable objects, Lee? Portable? Well, I guess in a sense you, you could carry them around, huh, Bishop uh, Fletcher? Yeah, sure. Right. So. Right, let's see, they're, uh, they're not manufactured, so that's they're right. animal, vegetable, or mineral, huh? Yeah, that sounds like another program. Let's try animal. <laughs> All right, try that. Are they animal? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are they living? Uh, well, at one time or other, yeah. <laughs> Are they symbolic, I mean, like the fish, <coughs> the symbol of Christ or something like that? Not uh, symbolic in the... Uh, in the immediate sense of the object we're looking for. They're not symbolic. Let's, let's forget about that aspect of it. Tom yes. O'Toole? Are they whole animal? Well, at one time, yes. Are, are they fish themselves? Yes. Are these uh, fish uh, uh, eaten by Catholics? Yes, I think you've got it. <laughs> the subject said that in again. <laughs> <laughs> is the fish eaten by Catholics on Friday. Right, Bishop Fletcher? Yes, yes, I... Uh, 
that, that, that question, in a way, was a hard one because it was, it, it's something so, so close to us. People talk of, think of Catholics many times as fish-eating people. They're referred to as fish eaters. <laughs> I can assure you it isn't through preference for most of us because we like a good steak a whole lot better than we do fish. And uh, the eating of fish is merely a substitute, eating something nutritious for something that the church has asked us to deny ourselves, namely fish. I mean, namely, flesh meat on Fridays. Now, uh, of course, that brings up something. Why does the church do that? Why does the church make it hard for us uh, so that we have to deny ourselves certain things we'd like to do? Well, actually, you know, that goes back to the very fact that sacrifice actually is the basis of our holy religion. That is the big act that our Lord himself performed in our redemption, the sacrifice and the cross. And so it is in our striving to be more and more like him, the church imposes a certain minimum amount of sacrifice that we should perform. And if we perform it in the right way, remembering that uh, we can imitate our Lord and become more like him by making sacrifices, then the very practice of eating fish or eating things that we don't like can be meritorious and helpful to us in becoming more and more like our Lord. That's what we ought to do. That's the attitude we ought to try to take. All right, thanks, Bishop Fletcher. Here's another subject now. This one's a teaching sent to us by Mrs. Mary Martin of 4515 Evans in St. Louis County. When one takes an oath, he calls upon God to witness the truth of what he says. A person who deliberately calls on God to bear witness to a lie commits the grievous sin of perjury. This topic is the teaching concerning perjury. Well, I think we ought to start off this teaching with Dick Meehan. Uh, is this a teaching that involves a moral precept, Lee? Yes. Uh, does it involve man's relationship to man? Uh, no, no, not primarily. Does it, does it involve an obligation to God? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, teaching. Is it embodied in the Ten Commandments? Yes. It's it's embodied. Yes. Uh, is it uh, have anything to do with the? Uh, Adoration of God. I don't think we'd say no, the adoration, think. no. Uh, Bob Hellwong? Does it, um, does it have anything to do with our last end? No. Mm -mm. Nellie? Could we narrow this down to the first three commandments, Lee? You, you could. Uh, would it be in the first commandment? No. So we're open for general questioning now. The second commandment? Yes. Based on. Uh, it had something to do with uh, not taking the Lord's name in vain, is that right? Something to do with that, yes. So anything to do with swearing or, um, anything to do with swearing? Well, yes. A the legal expert over here, come on. <laughs> I don't know what this is. <laughs> is this uh, something to do with the respect that we show at the mention of our Lord's name? No, we wouldn't tie it down that way, Dick. Well, that law didn't help me at all. Do you <laughs> practice in Arkansas? <laughs> not not licensed. I'm going to try to buy it for sure. Who's got an idea what this teaching is now? It is, so, is it something that we do in c to counteract uh, the uh, use of the Lord's name in vain? No, I wouldn't describe it that way. Is no. this a positive act that we take, Lee? The teaching is, is not a positive act, no. It's a prohibition. Uh, sort of. Sort of um, prohibition. Does it have something to do with blasphemy? Not blasphemy, no. This is tough. Yeah, it is tough. We agree on that. That's about all. <laughs> is, it, is it a teaching that uh, uh, is in regard to the, the method by which we describe God or refer to him? No. One minute to How go. How about sacrilege? Is it sacrilege, sacrilege is not it either. That's not it. Uh-uh. Somebody's going to be sorry when this one's over if they don't get is it. Is this a, a pretty fine point as opposed to a, a broad... Not any finer than some of the points you've been bringing out. <laughs> is, it the, is it the second <laughs> commandment itself? Not the second commandment itself, no. About 45 it, is seconds. It, is it the teaching that prohibits uh, uh, an adoration of, of any other thing or person uh, at the same level that we adore God? No. That's Everything right. to do with taking an oath? Yes. Uh, calling upon God to witness... Uh, perjury. Perjury is it. Oh. Bring our legal professors. <laughs> yeah. I'll never get licensed in Arkansas now. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, the teaching was perjury sent in by Mrs. Well, Martin. that is a pretty hard one, I think, Lee, but I, I thought for a minute they wouldn't get it, but they certainly did. 
After all, perjury, it seems to me, is one of the most awful and unnatural kind of things. It's calling on God, who is truth itself, to witness a falsehood that we swear to. And, of course, uh, such a thing is such an abhorrent thing that we sort of dismiss it rather quickly because we don't have occasion to swear. And certainly, if we did have occasion, why, our, our conscience would prompt us to um, um, tell the truth. But a lot of times, what we ought to remember this, that God is witness to every single thing we do. He knows every thought, word, action that we perform. And we can re misrepresent him by our actions and bad example in not being what we should be as his followers. We can uh, sort of um, make out, uh, we can misrepresent him and make out uh, that he is doing, that he is something that he is not. So uh, let us try in uh, all, all time to remember God is present, that he's witness of what we're doing and we will always do better than if we would forget that. Fine, Bishop Lutz. So let's move along with a couple of quickies here now, if we have time for both of them. Try the first one from B.M. <coughs> Kinney, 30, let's see, now, 9378 Hathaway Drive in Jennings. It's an object. Who wants to take a try at it? One object, Lee? E no. Class of objects, Lee? Yes. Manufactured? Yes. In existence today? Yes. Found in church? At times. Are they portable objects? Yes. Are they blessed objects? Yes. Uh, used in uh, s uh, ceremonies, church ceremonies? Yes. That's uh, with the priest. Yes. Bishops? Yes. Uh, is it a, a symbol of his office? Yes. Is it a crozier? No. The ring. Yes, a bishop's <laughs> ring. Is that that was right. fair. I didn't really get time for another quickie? <laughs> okay, let's move along real fast. This one was sent in by Nancy Britannia of 8758 Agate Court in Jennings, Missouri. It's an object. Who wants to try it? Specific uh, object, Lee? Uh, yes. Manufactured? No. Biblical? No. Connect with a person? Uh, well, yes. Or is it a natural object? Yes. In the Holy Lands? No. In, in Rome? No. America? In America, yes. Uh, the Diocese of Little Rock? You got it. <laughs> Very good. The Diocese of Little Rock. Well, I guess our time is just about up for today. I wish we had more time. They're really rolling here, aren't they, Bishop yeah. Fletcher, on these last... Hey, yeah, I think they're inspired. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. folks sometimes don't believe that they don't know anything but the category, but it's the truth, Sam. That is absolutely the truth. I can testify to that. I know they knew absolutely nothing about what we had to ask them. Uh, that when they went into the panel this morning. But they sure got ways of finding out. Well, Bishop uh, Fletcher, uh, we're so happy and honored that you could be with us here on Quiz of Catholic, especially since this is the first uh, program in the Quiz of Catholic series to be seen in your diocese of Little Rock. Hope well, you enjoyed yourself. Thank you very much, Lee. I enjoyed it, and I know it will do a great deal of good for us down in Little Rock. Well, we certainly hope so, and thanks again for coming, Bishop Fletcher. Come back and see us again sometime. And to the members of our panel, to Mr. Tom O'Toole, to Mr. Bob Hellrung, Nellie Zeiss, you. And Dick Meehan, we hope you had fun, and congratulations for a nice program there and identifying a lot of subjects. You folks, again, the brief moment we have remaining, by all means, send us subjects. Will you quiz a Catholic and care of the station you're watching right now? And again, you folks in Little Rock, uh, we'd love to have uh, letters from you, especially this time. Bye now. Quiz a Catholic has been produced by the Catholic Radio and Television Apostolate of St. Louis. The Great Crusade is brought to you each Sunday through the cooperation of the St. Louis Review and station KWK-TV. Production staff for the Great Crusade includes Father Francis J. Matthews, Catherine Walsh, and Jim Hennessy. Join us next week when the Great Crusade will again present Quiz a Catholic.